Hi, this is Oliver, K6OLI, and I'm going to show you how to work with a bed availability spreadsheet. First thing we want to do is download all our hospital forms, the core forms, to our computer. In this case, what I'll do is just grab the entire folder, we click on the down arrow here, and then we click on download. And as you can see down here, it is preparing a zip file that we can then open. You could also download the form, just this form, by clicking on the download icon here. We can now see that we've downloaded our form and we will open our folder here. Bring that over. And here are our hospital forms. What I would recommend is that you go up one into your downloads folder and then we can right mouse click on this and we can extract everything in this case you see that i have an exercise folder we highly recommend that you extract the file into the ex exercise folder right mouse click and hold then release and it says extract and then it gives you the option to change the name in this case, we'll just take out the rest here, but we know these are our hospital forms and they're in our angel fall complex exercise for this example. Then we click extract. And now it shows us the folder. However, we can also go into our angel fall complex exercise folder, double click on that. And now you see we have all our hospital forms in one convenient place. We can go in there, there's a subfolder here, and we can double click on the bed availability spreadsheet. This opens a spreadsheet in my case in LibreOffice, but it works almost exactly the same in Microsoft Excel. What we want to do next is go through it step by step. If this is too small for you to read, hold the control button, then use the scroll wheel on your mouse to make it larger. Now I'll do that now so you can all see what we're doing here. First thing we do, just like with all our forms, we check whether this is an exercise or a real event. Everything that we highlighted in light yellow is usually something you can fill in. So click on the down arrow here. We can switch to real event, but this was an exercise. So we click on exercise. If you have questions about the reference, you can click on this. It will open a browser and give you the original form in its PDF version. The hospital name that we have here filled in is Huntington, but let's make up a hospital for this exercise. We'll call it Arlington. Hospital doesn't exist in Pasadena, but just so you know, this is a made up um, for exercise purposes name. Next, we're selecting the hospital service level. This will be given to us by our contact at the hospital, usually emergency manager or the deputies. And then in this case, let's say we're looking at normal operations, check green, normal operations. Then we fill in the information, the time of when this information was current. Let's say this was current as of seven o'clock, or let's say eight o'clock this morning, AM see how easy it was to update if for whatever reason you can't read the entire line here and you'd like to go up here and just make this a little bit wider and you can see it's much easier to read this way all right now we would check the actual form there's a little explainer here about 24 hour time that's preferred to be used here but next we would actually fill in the information that we got from the hospital and just go down the list here. If there is not information for any one of these options, then ask. And if they don't have that bed availability, then we'll just fill in um, nothing, leave it blank. So in this case, we'll just fill it in as it was given to us for the exercise. Let's say we don't have a neonatal ICU. No negative pressure isolation to three operating rooms. Other, you can define what the other means. The nice thing about this is you could actually type that in, in this field. 
what other actually means in this context. But let's say we'll just leave it blank, ventilators, and then is mass de decon available? We've got the options yes and no here. And let's say it is available for Arlington. So we click yes. The report completed by will be the name of the person you're working with at the hospital. Let's go with the default for Arlington. That's Dr. No. James Bond fans will know where that's from. And the phone number, always enter a phone number. Phone numbers on all LA County medical alert center documents are required because that allows the medical alert center to call if there are any questions and confirm that it's a legitimate request or legitimate report. So please fill that in. For our exercises, we use the Hollywood standard for made up phone numbers. In our case, let's do 213 and then 555. That's the Hollywood standard, right? And then we can make something up here, 9988, just to keep it brief. And we can certainly update the date when this was updated. In this case, I recommend you can either manually enter an update, a new date, let's say 629. Or if you want to enter the current date, what you can do is highlight the cell and then con click control colon, and that gives you the current date. In this case, let's say this was part of the exercise on 629.2024 and click OK. That's the official part of the form. For the Aries LAX part, we recommend that you fill in the call sign, latitude, longitude, and what three words. And we also give you the suggested file name that will make this much easier for you to fill out. In this case, let's fill in my call sign, K6OLI. And now we need to look up my latitude, longitude. I did that beforehand and I have it here. My latitude for Arlington is, whoops, 34,1287. And my longitude is minus 118 for the Western Hemisphere, minus 118,1558 minus 118, 1558. And we truncate, we don't run up, we always truncate. And then of course we can fill in the what three words address here as well. Pram wins wishes, Pram wins wishes. And one thing you notice here, and we can make this a little bit wider as well since we made it larger. It actually filled in the file name for you. So if you want to keep this easy, you want to save not the default here, but you want to use this file name and you can update this. So let's say copy, right mouse click and copy. And then we'll click on file, save as. And in this case, we don't want to put it in the core file. We want to go up, not in there. We want to put it in our angel fall complex. And you can have an extra um, folder here that says traffic. But in this case, let's just leave it as is. We can delete everything that's in this field. Then right mouse click, click on paste. And you see it fills in our file name with the time of the hospital service level as well that it's an HSA, hospital status assessment and the facility and your call sign. And then click on save. The beauty of this, of course, is when we close this, let's say an hour later, we want to have an update for this. We can actually go back into our folder, in this case, the June Angel Fall Complex Exercise, open our HSA, and update the information. We can leave this as is. That probably will not change unless you change location. But we can update the time. Let's say we have the hourly update at 9. Let's say this was at 9.15. Our conditions have changed. We're now in yellow hospital service level. And you can see that because the numbers have, re oops, the numbers have reduced. I have one here. This stayed the same. Say we've got one here, one here, two here, 
and there are no more burn. Maybe it's a fire. And our ventilators are down to, let's say, three. And our mass decon is still available. But now we can just take a look. If Dr. Noah still filled this out, then that's great. If it's another person, let's say Dr. Morales filled this one out and the extension is different, we can just change that. It's 8899. The date is still the same. Now what we can do, we can go down here and see how it updated our timestamp from the field up here of the hospital service level. Could just copy this information, right click and copy, and then go to save as, and then delete everything in the field, right mouse click and paste. This is the updated HSA and we click on save. Now, if we go into our original folder, here, you can see the HSAs for 915 and 805, 805, and you can see they're 14 kilobytes, and that makes it easy to transmit via VARA chat as well as other um, modes like WinLink and so on. And I think 14 kilobytes, I think we can all handle. All right, that was a summary of the HSA. Thank you so much for your attention. Join us for the next video. This is K6OLI73.